the time for empty calls, for de-escalation is over. How can you do that? To equate Israel, a nation simply wishing to live in peace, acting in defense of its people with an aggressor bent on our destruction is not just wrong. It is a grotesque and immoral distortion of reality. This is not a conflict between two equal sides. This is a, a battle between a sovereign country defending its right to exist and a regime that seeks nothing less than our extinction. And I repeat what I said last time. We have no border with Iran. We have no dispute with them. Ask yourself why they spend so much money and energy to build those rockets and to attack us. Well, what is the reason behind it? Calls for de-escalation is a false symmetry, an absurd equivalence between the protector and the destroyer. Today, tonight actually, the Jewish people will welcome the new year. The past year has been the most challenging in our country's history, but we will prevail. In this coming year, we will not stop until all 101 hostages are back at their families' tables. Let the world understand, Israel will defend itself, and will do so with justice and strength. Thank you, Madam President. Madam President, yesterday, Iran launched approximately 200 ballistic missiles towards Israel. It stated it was in response to the killings of Hassan Nasrallah and the Islamic Revolutionary Guards Corp Commander Abbas Nil Farushan last week, as well as that of Hamas leader Ismail Aniye in Tehran in July. Millions of people across Israel and the occupied Palestinian territory were forced to seek shelter. One person was killed from the Iranian strikes, a Palestinian, in the occupied West Bank. As I did in relation to the Iranian attack in April, and as should have been obvious yesterday in the context of the condemnation I expressed, I again strongly condemn yesterday's massive missile attack by Iran on Israel. And these attacks, paradoxically, do nothing to support the cause of the Palestinian people or reduce their suffering. Almost one year has passed since the atrocious 7 October acts of terror by Hamas and the taking of hostages. And since last October, Israel has conducted in Gaza the most deadly and destructive military campaign in my years as Secretary General. The suffering endured by the Palestinian people in Gaza is beyond imagination. At the same time, the situation in the occupied West Bank, including East Jerusalem, continues to deteriorate with Israeli military operations, construction of settlements, evictions, land grabs, and intensification of settler attacks, progressively undermining any possibility of a two-state solution. And simultaneously, armed Palestinian groups have also used violence. Hamas has continued to launch rockets, and just yesterday, seven Israelis were killed in a terror attack in Jaffa. Madam President, the events of the past week, the past months, and indeed nearly the past year make it clear. It's high time for an immediate ceasefire in Gaza, with the immediate and unconditional release of all hostages, the effective delivery of humanitarian aid to Palestinians in Gaza, and the irreversible progress to a two-state solution. It's high time for a cessation of hostilities in Lebanon, re-election towards full implementation of Security Council resolutions 1559 and 1701, paving the way for diplomatic efforts for sustainable peace. It's high time to stop the sickening cycle of escalation after escalation that is leading the people of the Middle East straight over the cliff. Each escalation has served as a pretext for the next. We must never lose sight of the tremendous toll this is growing, that this growing conflict is taking on civilians. 
and we cannot look away from systematic violations of international humanitarian law. This deadly cycle of tit-for-tat violence must stop. Time is running out, and I thank you. Je remercie.